A little while ago, I discussed about hacking and what the threats are in that at the moment. Well, this video is certainly not meant to scare anyone. You can watch the BBC for the propaganda on that. But let's do the real, real stuff here is about antivirus and um, threats and that that's going on at the moment. In the last uh, week, I've been hacked five times, and <laughs> it's been one of those uh, those times that I just I thought sometimes you just want to give up. Um, the first one was about a week ago today, and I felt there was something about my email account that wasn't right. And I said to my wife, I says I'm sure there's somebody trying to get in, and. She's just said, you know, we'll just back everything up and all the rest of it like you do anyway. Um, however, uh, it was come, I think, Thursday and Friday and Sunday of just nonstop changing passwords and all the rest of it because I've been hacked from uh, London, Birmingham and a few other places. And it's just it's very invasive, isn't it? If you've ever been there before yourself. There's only been one ever previous time when I've been hacked um, in years and years of decades of being involved in computers. So anyway, the thing is, is what can you do about it? Um, with this, uh, this is, as I said, it's not to scare people. It's to actually give them information on how to stop these things. It says, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure whether this is, uh, you know, this is a good thing, hosting tribunal, but... 73% of black hatters, black hatters, black hat hackers, uh, the naughty people, said traditional firewall and antivirus security is irrelevant or obsolete. The other type of uh, hacker, white hat hackers, <laughs> um, they're the ones that, you know, work for security purposes and to stop these people. In... You can see things like cyber maps, cyber threat maps, um, and <laughs> like security experts say that these, you know, have to be taken with a pinch of salt and then some people swear by them. I think these are supposed to be in real time and they're coming from different countries, so I would err on the side of caution with that, but they're good to look at. So what you can do is change... There's, there's um, a woman that works for me and her daughter's been hacked twice at the bank and so she had she had to change her cards and the details and everything like that and none of us want to lose money i mean that's that's important um and of course our documents and files that's important to us as well so we got a backup you, you know have a good antivirus um i've put total av on which apparently is i change what, what i do you know personally is i I make viruses and to see if the antivirus actually picks it up. And if they don't, then that's not really, you know, because the antivirus doesn't pick up every malware, you know, any every Trojan or anything like that. It doesn't, and I, I, I've proved that. Um, but what it, it's still much better having, you know, even the precautionary measures on. Um, so there's things like the shampoo, which I like as a company, but their antivirus, I didn't feel was up to it. So I've changed and hopefully that, you know, that will uh, be OK. The other thing is, is make sure you, your, um, you know, your passwords are hard to, to think of. It's no good having things like Mary had a little lamb because people, you know, the know that type of thing. These people who are trying to get into your computer and to take things and be invasive and take your money and your files if you're an important person or whatever. These people are not stupid. These people are intelligent and, gen you know, just generalizing these people are quite intelligent. So they, how they do these things often um, is by email. Email is a massive thing. I think it's about 93, 94% of attacks come that way. Um, and the other thing is the uh, the use password cracker programs, or sometimes called password recovery programs. Um, this here is on Android, and I use it on my phone. And what it is is a password cracker, just out of interest, really, password cracker and brute force. And what that means is that you have many different types of things. For example, you could have I don't know 
ducts or periods as the Americans call it, hashtags, dollar signs, at signs, all sorts of different things. And brute force, what that means is that if you're using just a password thing just on its own, you can it can be if you're going to like sort of get get people like as I said, Mary had a little lamb type of thing. That would be picked up very easily but brute force is something that you can just leave and just allow it to get on itself and it goes through all sorts of combinations at the very basics if you think of something like an anagram program and you know and then like sort of times that by many many um you know you can get the thing with like every combination and things like that and these uh have a look at this password cracker brute force it's legal it's on android it's uh it's there for everybody to have a look at um, just to give you some information of how these things uh, occur. But as I said, if I was talking to myself this time last year, I would have said, you know, Nigel, you're talking absolute rubbish. But I haven't had that many times when I've... Uh, well, I did actually cyber security a little, a little while ago, and it, d it did actually change my mind. And it's a good job. In the last week, I've had, uh, I've had a nightmare time with it. So I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. There's lots of these things going on at the moment. So once again, thanks for watching these videos.